After modeling and materials, you are often ready to animate. In Blender, there are many different ways that you can animate, including, including full physics simulations, skeletal or armature-based animation, and basic object animation. I'm going to be showing you the latter, as it's the raw basics and will get you started. The way the animation works is by placing the object at certain positions along the timeline, or at a certain frame, that then, when played over time, allows the object to move from point A, B, to C. And if you remember in the first video, or the second video, with the interface and navigation, I mentioned the timeline here. And we're going to be making use of this now to move through time. And if you notice that the, the numbers here and here increase and decrease as I left click and drag on the small green bar left and right. And this is moving my frame number, or my current position in time, through time. Currently, Blender is set to play a total length of 250 frames, which the frame rate is set to 24 frames per second. So for every 24 frames, such as here, that is one second of animation. And so the total second, or a few seconds of animation for the two 250 frames. Let's go ahead and make our cube move along those frames for some very basic movement. And the way that you can do this is in the 3D view, let's just switch to top view by hitting 7 on our number pad, and perhaps hit 5 to toggle out of perspective mode. Now we want the cube to start right here, and so we can hit I for insert keyframe, and let's go ahead and insert one for the location, the rotation, and the scale. And this means that we are telling Blender at frame 1, I want it to record the position, the rotation, and the scale. And so we can just click OK, or hit left click to insert that keyframe. Now if you scroll through time, nothing happens. And this is because we only have one position. And we need another position for which to record it. So let's go ahead and move up to, say, frame 25, 24. So it'll be one second of animation. And let's just hit G to move our cube over. And we'll move it directly along the x-axis by holding down or by pressing X after pressing G. Such that we'll place it right there. And then we can hit I to insert another keyframe. And we'll do location, rotation, and scale. And this is because I'll probably add in some rotation and some scaling in our basic movement. So now, if you left click and drag, you can see that the cube moves from point A to point B over the course of the 24 frames. You'll also notice that it's inserted a yellow line along the timeline at each place that you've inserted a keyframe. And this is just a good visual reference so you can tell where things are. So this is very, very basic movement. But let me show you another way to do this that's a little more automatic that is also very user-friendly to starting out. And this is being able to record your movement. So let's just press the small record button here. And now any time that we make a change to our object, along the time, it will record that change. So for example, while I'm on 24 here, frame 24, perhaps I want to change the location from here to over here. Well, then I'll just hit G, move it over, and left click. And now it has updated that keyframe from point A to point B. Or maybe if I want to move up to frame 48 and add another second of animation, we'll move it over here and left click. And now, when we scroll back and forth, you'll see it's moving from point A to point B. So this is very, very cool, and Record allows us to work in a much more cohesive manner without having to worry about constantly inserting keyframes, so it's much more automatic. And this works for rotation, scaling, and movement, as you can see here. And we can position this at any point in time. We don't have to just modify the current keyframes. We can add a new one halfway through here, say, for example, to scale it, and then it'll scale back down, like so. So this is a very, very handy technique for doing very basic object animation that really you can do a lot with. So, at this point, we have a single cube that is animated very easily. We can add any more objects that we wish to animate and do as we wish to play it. If you wish to play back your animation, you can simply use the timeline controls here to go back to the beginning press play, pause it, skip to the end, and whatnot. If you want to change your total animation length, say for example right here we only have 48 frames, then you can change the end 
right here by control clicking in the field and typing in 48 or 48. To make it even easier, you can also left click and drag to scroll it or with your mouse cursor over the timeline, hit E to tell it to be the end at the current frame and it will place the endpoint at the current frame as you can see here. So then you can simply go back to the beginning and press play and watch your animation loop back to the beginning to end in the timeline. And this is all in real time, so you can see it in the 3D view here. You can rotate around, watch your object move, and enjoy. So that's very basic keyframe animation or object animation in Blender.